I'm back for episode two of Cheap Bike into Super Light Bike Build for under £1,000. In this video, I'm gonna find all the parts that I need. I'm gonna give you advice on how to find some absolute bargains of your own. And then I'm gonna take you guys along with me when I pick up one of the parts I'm buying from a real life human being. You look really familiar. Sure yeah. we've never met? This could be pretty funny. Right then, first things first, if you haven't seen episode one, let's have a quick 10 second recap. Go. Now, if you haven't seen that, it's probably because you weren't subscribed. So if you've not, do that right now and then come back and carry on. So last week's video ended with me saying I had a little bit of homework to do. And you'll be pleased to know that unlike when I was at school, I've actually made a really good start doing that and I've been buying some of the parts I need for the build already. But before we go any further than that, I wanna formally apologize to everyone in the comments from episode one that said, no, please don't sand the frame. I'm not coming back if you sand it. Don't ruin the bike. Um, well, yeah, basically let me just show you something. Um, sorry, everybody. I couldn't help myself. I'd already started sanding it when episode one went out. I couldn't stop halfway through. And to be honest, I felt like I couldn't really turn down the opportunity of sanding down a carbon fiber frame. I'm never gonna get to do that again. I've never done it before. And it was a really interesting experiment to see how much weight I can save. Do I regret doing it? Yeah, I kind of do. I can't brush over that fact. I'm not gonna do it in the future. I feel like I've ticked that box. I've saved the weight on the frame, but what we do need to do is weigh it and see just how much weight we've saved. Let's do it now. No way! I've only saved <laughs> grams. That's literally ridiculous. Um, hopefully we'll have bleeped out how much weight we've saved. And if you wanna have a guess, let me know in the comments section down below. And do you know what? For the one, hopefully one person, that guesses the weight correctly, of how much weight I've saved to the nearest one gram, I'm gonna try to organize some fantastic GCN swag for you. Right, let's crack on, where were we? So I've ordered a couple of the parts already. So chain, ordered, price on screen. Chain ring bolts, ordered as well. We have to go one by with those, price on screen with those. So I found these Continental Sprinter tubs. They're brand new, no boxes, never been glued, and they're 22 millimeters wide. So quite skinny, and that's gonna help to keep the weight down. Now they were listed as buy it now or make an offer. So that's what I did, I offered 60 pounds for the pair. So only a little bit less than the original asking price. Now this is something that you should sort of take note of when you're making offers on the prices for certain parts because you don't wanna go and offer such a low price that you offend or annoy the seller because then they're unlikely to make you a good deal and accept what you're trying to offer them. You're just gonna annoy them. And by doing a sensible price, hopefully we can strike up a good deal. Anyway, great success, they accepted my offer, and those tires should be on their way to GCN Megabase right now. Before I search out for some wheels, next on my list are the handlebars. Now, I don't know how many of you out there are or perhaps aren't familiar with hill climb racing, but here in the UK, it's like super popular. Something I quite often see people using are super lightweight handlebars with a lower section of the drops, completely chopped off and removed to save even more weight. Now, I kind of feel like I want in on the action a little bit on that. Is it a crucial upgrade? Absolutely not. However, I found these over on Facebook Marketplace for like 50 pounds, which is like, kind of seems too good to be true. So I'm gonna have a good look. But like many things in life, I feel that if it looks too good to be true, chances are it is. How am I gonna know? First thing I can do, just message the person selling them. Let's have a little look. Hey, bars look great for a project building. Are they good to go for hill climb racing? Right. Oh, actually, worst case scenario though, if the handlebars turn out to be not what I expected, I've still got the original ones and I can save that from a budget. Hey guys, I've, uh, I've decided to try and infiltrate Alex's video. So I know that he's looking for budget parts online for his lightweight bike. I've got a set of hill climb bars that I've chopped down previously, lying around, um, and some other bits too. So I'm gonna list them online under a, a pseudonym and then um, hopefully see if he finds them and then uh, takes the bait and I make some money. <laughs> 
Next on the list, the wheels. So I went straight onto eBay here, loads of bargains to be had on there, and with a simple search of tubular road wheels, I found these. Now there's always loads of stuff to filter out on eBay, stuff that's either damaged, worn out, that kind of stuff. I don't want any of that old tat. Now you need to always study the pictures and description very carefully when you're searching this stuff out and assume absolutely nothing. And if there's any doubt over whether a part's suitable for what you want, first thing you need to do is just message the seller and ask lots of questions. Now I spotted these. So we've got Carbon Zip 303 Tubular rim brake wheels with super light tune hubs. These are like just what I wanted. Now again, like the tubular tires, these were a buy it now or make an offer kind of situation. So that's exactly what I did. Now if you're not familiar with the make an offer um, function on eBay, you get three chances. So three separate offers and after that, you've got no more and you've got to stick to your original buy it now price. So that's exactly what I did. I went straight in make an offer. So these are listed at £325. So I went in pretty strong at £250. Offer declined. Went in again, £275. Offer declined. Now at this point I was kind of pretty stressed because I really did want these wheels and I didn't want to miss out on them. So I think all I need to do is to play it safe and offer an amount that's much closer to the original asking price. That's exactly what I'm going to do now. So I'm going to go straight in, £300 just 25 pounds less than the original asking price. Fingers crossed, right, I'm gonna hit enter. No, uh, this is incredible, offer accepted, boom. I've got myself some fancy wheels. I cannot wait for these things to arrive. I'm gonna probably pay for fast delivery, to be honest. Um, two or three days, fingers crossed. <laughs> I can't wait to get this box open. Whoa, I fancy, fancy super light parts. Right, let's get some scissors. Made it into the box. Here we go, right. Get this down. Whoa, these are light. Right, here we are. Back at Mega Base, this time armed with some brand new carbon fiber wheels, and some tubular tires. Fantastic. I'm absolutely stoked on my new wheels. These things are incredible. Right, let's put these to the side. Um, now, would you believe it? I don't actually have any quick release levers just lying around at home. I guess I could use the original ones from the original wheels from the bike, but we're trying to make this bike super light, so I thought I'd invest a little bit of money and buy some super light ones. Actually, I just sort of tell a lie a little bit, really. I did have one quick release lever lying around at home, but it's like that ultra heavy one for the rear wheel. You know the one you get on an indoor trainer? Can't put that on a bike build. So I dived onto Amazon, found these. They're going to be here any day now. Oh, jeez, that was quick. Caught me off guard there. Right, so here's what I got. Fantastic. I'm not 100% sold on the brand name, though. Risk. Um, according to the box, riding is my life. Fantastic, probably gonna use these just for cycling uphill. If I need to go downhill, put the original quick release levers back in. You know, play it safe. Right, my phone's just gone off, let me have a little look, because any, with any luck, it's gonna be the person that's replied about these handlebars. So what have we got? You guessed it, it is. Right, so they're saying, yeah, bars are great for hill climb events, that's what I've used them for. Are you happy to take them? Sounds fantastic, I'm gonna organize um, trying to meet them. So I'm gonna reply, say I'll take the bars with any luck, they might be free this afternoon, because I think they're in Bath as well. Right, let's do that. Pick this up in a minute, fingers crossed. So we're on our way to meet the seller. Actually, not that far from GCM Mega Race. Super handy, that. Now, there's a couple of points which I want to make everyone aware about when you're going to go and buy parts from someone that you never met. If you're going to arrange to meet them, do so in a public space where it's likely to be busy with lots of people around. Let any of your friends and family know that where you're going and what you're up to. So that way, if there's any issues, they'll know where to find you. And when it comes to paying for the part that you buy in, it's important not to pay with cash, if you ask me. I think you should probably make use of services such as PayPal. That way, you've got a level of protection as the buyer. And if someone wants you to pay via friends and family, well, unless they're your friend or your family, don't do so, because that way, you don't have any of that buyer protection. Right, let's go find them. Ah. Oh. Hey man. Good? Alex? Yeah. 
Chris. How are you? Um, you, uh, you look really familiar. Sure yeah. we've never met? Right. Same name. I think All I right. Know. Okay, um, yeah. these are the bars, are they? That's them, yeah. These are going to do just the trick? Should do, yeah. You in a hill climb? Yeah, they look like the part. All right, yeah, I'll take them. Am I right to PayPal you some cash? Yeah, that's fine, yeah. All right. Um, one second. Right, yeah, that'll be with you instantly, actually. Cool. Mega, pleasure doing business with you. No worries. Good luck. See you later. I swear. Ow. Oh, okay, made it back to the safety of GCN Mega Base. I've got my lightweight handlebars and I've got all of the lightweight components that I've sort of cobbled together here in front of me. Now, those of you with a keen eye for detail will have noticed that a super lightweight carbon fiber saddle has made it into the mix. Now, I haven't had to go out, research, find it online, and most importantly, I haven't had to pay one single penny for this thing. Reason for that is a good friend of mine kindly donated it to me. Now, the reason he donated it is because it's actually broken. So, where the rails join the main section of the body has actually come sort of debonded from it, which means it kind of renders it pretty useless in its current state. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to fix it up. So I'm going to clean it all up, bond the rails back onto the base, and with any luck, it should be good to go. I could potentially maybe add a rivet on each side. We'll figure that out when we get to fixing it. Next thing we need to do, though, is we should probably tally up what I've spent so far on all these parts. So, I've been keeping a tab of this on my phone. Let me run you through the list. So, initial bike, £480 spent. £60 on the tyres, £325 on the wheels, £50 on the bars, quick release levers, £25, chain, £30, one by chain ring bolts, £10, tubular tape, ready to glue my tubular tyres on, £10. Um, and that kind of means I've got £10 spare. Although, actually, no, I don't have £10 spare, I've got £5 spare. Ugh. Spent £5 on some quick setting steel reinforced epoxy in the hopes of repairing my saddle. Right, next thing we need to do is probably start trying to figure out how to clean this thing up. So when it comes to repairing the saddle, you might think it would be quite complicated, but it's actually quite a simple affair. So what I need to do is I'm gonna use my cloth and a bit of either alcohol or disc brake cleaner to clean up the two surfaces that we're trying to stick together. The cleaner the surfaces, the better the bond is gonna be. So we'll do that in a second. Once I've then got our two-part epoxy, squeeze some onto the cardboard, mixed it up, I can use a small screwdriver or a little bit of cardboard, anything you've got to hand, to get the epoxy in between the two surfaces and then clamp it together to get it to hold in place and dry. And according to the packet, it says it's going to be ready to go in six minutes. I'll do one side first, then I'll do the other side. Simple reason for that, I've got just one clip. Let's get to it. First side done, I won't bore you with repeating the process on the other side because it's exactly the same, so by the power of magic. Three, two, one. There you go, that draws episode two to a close. It's been fantastic. I am super happy with all of the parts I've got here ready for the build. Next week, I'm gonna put it all together, take the bike for a little spin. If you enjoyed this week's episode, give it a big thumbs up and um, don't forget to let me know your guess of how much weight I saved off the frame in the comments section down below, because I will give a prize to anyone that gets it just right. Right, it's enough waffle from me. I'm out of here. Did um, somebody say lunch? <laughs>